All right, got some pretty crazy news for you. More out of the devil-possessed charismatic cult. This time you have a Jezebel female prophetess named, uh, what's her name? Uh, Kat Kerr, that's her name is. She, you know, professed herself to be a, a prophetess. But really, she just has the spirit of Jezebel, pretty much. She has the mentality of Jezebel, as most uh, charismatic prophetesses do. We're going to show you this article from uh, Protestia. I think it's, it used to be called Pulpit and Pen, but they, they got a new website, I think. Uh, charismatic prophetess says evil residue lives in clothes and must be cleansed before it leaves the suicide. That was, uh, this is uh, her name. Funny how she got the weird colored hair. I mean, it's the kind of stuff that a sodomite would do, but um, this it just shows the, the uh, uh, mentality that the charismatic Jezebels have and how a lot of them think they're teachers and think they're preachers. And there are women, first of all, and women have been greatly used in the Bible. Okay, Mary was is an example of that. Uh, there are other examples too. What's her name? Uh, Esther, another good example. Um, but most of these charismatic women who claim to be prophets, they have the same spirit as Jezebel, and uh, you're going to see just the nuttiness. So it says, when Kat Kerr, our favorite pink-haired charismatic meme bot, and Doctor Doctor Michael Brown, approved prophetess, isn't uh, weaving an unbiblical tale of witchcraft and false theology when claiming that babies die in miscarriage. Sometimes, sometimes God, quote, puts them back in the womb. Uh, book, chapter, and verse for that, please. You know, that's the thing about this, this charismatic cult. They always like to do extra biblical things. I mean, they're just like Roman Catholics. It's just the same thing as the same cult-like mentality of Roman Catholicism. The thing of adding their own, you know, human traditions to the word of God. And when you say, well, where is that in the scriptures? They'll say, well, it doesn't matter, my feelings trump scripture. It's just like all the Roman Catholics will say, well, you know, church tradition and the Pope, whatever, contradicts. If, if the scriptures say one thing and the Pope says another, then we go with what the Pope says. The charismatic cult is no difference. They are of their, the same spirit as Rome. Uh, the heaven is full of 20-foot Sas Sasquatch warriors, fairies, and unicorns, or explaining how she has pic a, a picture of thousands of lion-faced angels, frog-marching, uh, chained frog marching chain demons across the sky in order to go to heaven for judgment now if she was quote unquote seeing these things i don't deny i think she did see something i think she definitely saw something but it was under the other under a demonic influence it was basically a lying sign of wonder from devils that's the thing you know i've, I've been taught quite frankly that when some of these charismatic you know devil possessed charismatics say oh I, i've seen this i had a vision i don't i don't deny it. i think they have that i i definitely think they have they have seen a vision they have seen something okay but what is that vision where does it come from it's it's a demonic it's from demonic influence it's devil spirits so they they have indeed saw something i don't deny it they definitely saw something but it was from devils not from god because a lot of times it has zero basis in god's finished word um, 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 19 to 21 talk about how we have a more sure word of prophecy, the scriptures. And 2 Timothy 2, 16, 7, 2 Timothy 3, sorry, 16 and 17 talk about how all scripture uh, is profitable for doctrine, for proof, for correction. The scriptures alone are enough for doctrine, reproof, and correction, and it's our sure word of prophecy. We don't need these extra biblical sign gifts and, and stuff that the devil possessed charismatics do. But continuing... Uh, she is, oh, by the way, too, a thing of, of demons across the sky that go to heaven for judgment. Let me just show you a verse on that, by the way. Uh, where is it? Jude. I think it's verse 6. Yeah. And the angels which kept not their, their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains of darkness unto the, day, unto the judgment of the great day. Okay. Where are the fallen angels? Demons. You know? The, uh, of course, there are devils on earth, obviously, but the fallen angels, the ones that left their first estate, they're in chains of darkness right now, waiting for the judgment. They're not being paraded across the sky by angels, to, you know, for the final judgment. Another good scripture on that. It's uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Okay, the the some of the demons, some of the angels, and of course, demons not a scriptural word. The angels, fallen angels that sin against God, they're in chains of darkness, waiting for the judgment. They're not being paraded across the sky. I mean, ridiculous, uh, totally unscriptural too. Uh, continuing, just getting back to the verse I had pulled up. Um, going to go to heaven. She explained how how depressed and suicidal people leave evil residue in the clothing, and it must be purged with blue fire. Uh, lest it make make one, thus it make one want to kill themselves. 
speaking to the chief enabler and gullibly and gullibly Steve uh, King sorry King Steve Schultz on episode nine of the Wednesdays with of Wednesdays with Cat and Steve. Steve explains that he used used to have a jacket given to him by his dad, who happened to have anger problems. Every time he wore the jacket, he would uh, likewise become angry and agitated. The pattern, a pattern continu that continued for years. It was only after throwing out the jacket that he ceased from being enraged and upset every time he wore it, uh, and upset every time he wore it, prompting Kerr to chime in uh, with these unique pearls. This is what she said, the uh, Jezebel prophetess, the charismatic Jezebel. The father showed me these things, and he, when he said, do not touch uh, a garment that is spotted by the flesh, in the word that means people who commit sins, people who are filled with their own self, kind of like the charismatics actually, and who don't even care about others, can't, I can't highlight this, who don't even care about others, why, oh, my mouse is not working, don't even care about others, okay, I'm not going to bother highlighting the thing, don't even care about others, don't take something they own. So this is don't take something they own, basically. Uh, don't take it and wear it because there's a residue of them on it. I understand all that, but a seer. I'll look at things and some people's garments to have stuff on it. If you don't want your own garments, collect your words, what you're saying. So, that, you know, nutty, charismatic, unscriptural nonsense. Speaking of socials, particular case, she elaborates. Uh, when this happens to them so many times, sometimes it's depression, they, they don't even know why, and they've taken something from someone who lives so depressed, they may, they maybe they even took their life because they could handle, they could, they couldn't handle, my mouse is not working, they couldn't handle that. Maybe they got to where they couldn't handle living. You do not want to take stuff like, stuff like that from people. And she says, she says, if you have uh, anything from anyone, you ought to cleanse it for the kingdom, which involves touching and doing some sort of incarnation over it. See, she goes a little thing there. But it's just your, your typical charismatic witchcraft. Now I'm going to show you some scripture that perfectly describes this charismatic witch, this Jezebel, Kat Kerr. Revelation 2.20. Now withstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, Hello, right here. Call herself a prophetess. To teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication, to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Uh, verse 21. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery and hurt with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Okay, and it goes down there. But that's the thing about these charismatic witches, these, these Jezebels. They have the same mentality as Jezebel. Uh, described in Revelation chapter 2, verses 20 to 21. So I just wanted to show you guys that. There's more unscriptural witchcraft nonsense from the charismatic Catholic cult. That's all it is. It's just Roman Catholic. That's all it is. So don't be deceived by this charismatic cult. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.